And then I'm going to record as well. Great, so we are now live. Um, thank you for joining us. My name is Sorry, my name is Candice Allison. I am the director at the bag factory in Johannesburg, and we are a triangle network partner. Um, and this is a series of talks that Triangle Network is running as part of the new Triangle Network TV channel. The, um, the project is supported by the Prince Klaus Fund, and we are quite excited to be the first partner to be presenting. So I'm with, with me today is Pumlani and Tuli. He is a studio artist at the Bag Factory. He's been there for, oi, since 20, 2017? 18. 2018, okay. Um, and he'll be speaking about the work of Preempt Group, which is a multidisciplinary collective facilitated by Pumlani and Mbali Dlamini, another artist. The group works within the intersection of archives and open source technologies using film, performance and research. The collective engages diverse publics and audiences through workshops, attempting to make visible the pauses of technology within decoloniality. Um, they ask how open source technologies, particularly if analyzed with the lens of traditional epistemologies, and they translate re their research through film and hypermedia, often reflecting on analog and technological image making. So I'm going to hand over to Pumlani and he's going to do his presentation for you. And then um, we'll see if I have any questions um, at the end and then we'll engage in some discussion. Thanks. Right. Thank you very much, Candice, uh, for the introduction. Um, yeah, yes, my name is Pumlani, as Candice mentioned. Um, I'm an uh, artist, uh, also working within uh, the confines of what the collective works. Um, I have both practices, my studio practice and my collaborative practice. Um, so my work previously had been facilitated within two folds, like two extremes, uh, both studio work and the work uh, that engages uh, wider public audiences. Um, so these practices have sh shifted towards um, the establishment of a preempt group. Um, as uh, Candice have already given a, uh, an introduction. So preempt group was um, started in uh, 2014 um, with uh, two other artists. Uh, um, the issue was just to kind of reconcile our artistic background based on our institutional education. Uh, as I was um, in, a graduate from the University of Johannesburg, there was a, a, necessi a necessary need to um, go within a professional sphere of art making. And obviously that uh, comes with its own uh, conditions and its own uh, problems and its own challenges. So uh, the idea came uh, between three of us to kind of have a shared studio. We would uh, kind of pay for the studio and both work on our individual projects and see if there would be any collaborations that and, uh, um, emerge from that. But uh, from starting the collective in 2014, the, the ideas were still kind of open-ended. We didn't really specifically have a specific focus. Although um, our work was based within studio work, um, there was an interest uh, to kind of reconcile my um, university education and working within the sphere of art making. Um, so uh, as we started working, um, and obviously in a small studio between three of us, the idea of collaboration kind of uh, emerged from that. So uh, pre and group emerged. Um, although the, the two previous artists that uh, I started with are no longer part of the collective anymore, but like um, the collective itself attempts to see how opportunities for collaborations can happen outside of a structure that like is really defined 
based on the individuals uh, that we invite, um, but just to see what forms of engagements we can entice people to be interested. Um, so yeah, the collective works with uh, film, video, uh, performance and research. Um, and then we've based all our projects uh, with the intention of engaging our broader publics through workshops. Uh, these are the three workshops that we've been um, kind of attempting to put together a stop motion workshop, a VR and AR workshop, and most recently a 3D scan. I'll go in depth in regarding each specific workshops and how it also fits in line with our projects. So yeah, as I've kind of mentioned already, the background of Pian Group, um, uh, these are our artistic uh, focuses. Um, so uh, the, when the collective began, uh, there was a, perhaps a, an interesting like insight into moving the work within both uh, perform, I mean, mainly performance. Uh, since uh, we didn't necessarily have any performance background, uh, we are not, situated within performance studies. We didn't really study performance or anything like this. So it was just a few interests that we have previously with myself, Ngate um, Kobaloi and Pule um, Mahopa. Uh, so there was an interest of um, making a, a, a body of work that kind of would be multifaceted in its own right and be able to be situated in position within different contexts. So this is the first project that we started within uh, the collective. The project is called Um John Dolo. Um, it was an insight uh, regarding the evictions that were happening in, in the broader aspect of Johannesburg when people were chased out of uh, apartments because of rundown buildings and those vacant spaces. Um, so this is the structure that I put together, and then I we invited different performers. We actually initially started as performing the shelter ourselves, and later on, as the project grew, we invited more people to kind of participate. Um, so the interest of having work within the public spheres was an important uh, facet to us because of the directions that the Johannesburg, Johannesburg city fabric already breeds. The, the city is, is always in motion. It's, it's in a constant state of flux. Um, there's a huge sense of mobility, uh, both of uh, bodies that move in the space and less of um, in maybe infrastructure because of course the city has quite uh, pertinently been well, the, like less development within the city, but obviously with more influx and more people coming in the space, there is that sense of uh, change in motion. So the project was uh, focused on uh, arriving those uh, issues. Um, as I've mentioned regarding a non-professional and uh, commercial focus, um, <clears throat> the direction of already working within the com confinements of artistic production, of course, the challenges of reconciliation of artistic education and what we felt was needed within the city. Um, we had to kind of collapse everything that we knew or what we studied to see what kind of uh, ways or engagements that we can uh, put together to engage uh, different publics and to grow audiences within our work. Uh, so later on, uh, we invited to participate at the infecting the city with the same project. The, the, the first initial uh, iteration of the work was shown at, uh, it was part of the triangle, it was part of the uh, workshop, Tubela workshop. And then later on, we were invited to participate at um, infecting the city, a multidisciplinary performance festival happening in Cape Town in 2014. Um, the idea of uh, multidisciplinary in our own right already means that, uh, artistic work can shift within the context and spaces that it is shown, um, both within the confines of gallery spaces, museums, or within the public spheres, and already engaging the material properties of uh, each city and its context 
to bring about like different insights and ways of looking. So the uh, the, the presentation that the Infect in the City gave us the space to like relook at the work um, of how we kind of initially started in, in Johannesburg. And then obviously we were faced with other interest uh, pointers within showing the work in Cape Town, um, the colonial sculptures that are, are placed and based there. Um, which was also interesting later on uh, to see things like uh, Fismas Falls, where uh, Fismas Fall when students in Cape Town um, and other universities within uh, Johannesburg and the broader South Africa uh, took into, into the public space to uh, relook at how the position of colonial sculptures are in, within, within the city. Um, yeah, as in the beginning for us, it was uh, an interesting point to uh, look at this and how if the cities are spaces of change and shifting and mobility and in a constant state of flux, how then uh, public spheres as a form of identifying national ideas or um, ideas of identity, not necessarily like change at all, if sculptures are not uh, very monumental, is there a possibility of changing uh, this narrative? And obviously, uh, within the context of apartheid system, the situation was different as we look at it at the moment. Um, the work was also invited for a, a Gute project space. We just had an installation based work of these uh, costumes or structures in, in the space. Um, and obviously in the project space, the situation also differs a little bit in that the works become more kind of static as opposed to have, having a sense of motion. But this presentation or like exhibition helped us to um, position the works and seeing how different folds can kind of emerge from it. Um, yeah, this is the kind of similar in, uh, installation that we had at the uh, uh, project space before they shifted the space. Um, the interest of uh, performance is already with the rights of uh, pos positioning it within uh, the ideas of research that performance is already research in any artistic production or artistic ideas or concepts that you engage with. There's um, an immediate kind of uh, research that already happens with um, the making or the, 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 the production of the, the, the work. Uh, so in that, uh, the formulations of writing about, about the work, uh, both of its artifacts, the material uh, resources that emerge from it will help to uh, situate the work uh, within uh, different audiences, uh, whether writing about the, the project or um, doing a publication. So the, there is an interesting idea of uh, nonlinear structure uh, within collectivity or collective production. Um, and obviously this becomes a challenge in, in a sense that there is different interesting or interesting points based on the resources that the collective image uh, comes up with. Uh, one person might be looking at one angle within the work, another person is looking at another angle in the production of the work. But the, the idea is just to reconcile those uh, tensions and to kind of marry them um, without a specific focus of, okay, this is how, the output of the work should be, but like to allow the process to, uh, you know, engage that. So the sense of nonlinearity is already a more a decolonial process in in artistic production. Uh, in that, there isn't necessarily like a a top down approach, but a more like a, a flat structure in both how we converse about the artistic work and how we want to show it. So the showing the work within the public spheres uh, Im um, immediately gives us those uh, uh, chances to like uh, see how the, the work emerges. So the work is both like a process-based uh, practice. At the same time, it's also um, 
engages different different aspects in, into into the work. Uh, apologies regarding that. Uh, um, different processes, and in this in this project, we were also as we were invited in Cape Town, we staged a kind of a silent uh, protest uh, close to the uh, the parliament, and. The immediate audiences is the people that already are going past the space. So the intention of already staging the work within the public sp public spheres allows certain chances to happen, uh, certain engagements to happen. And then later on, um, uh, forms of collaboration always happen. So this is what was part of uh, the artistic work uh, when I was in Switzerland. Uh, because the, the collective had already not quite collapsed, but we're still kind of engaging in our own right. But I was still kind of interested to kind of pursue these uh, practices that have already initially started. Um, uh, with incorporating different ways of uh, engaging the people that I, I, I particularly work with and the people that are interested to work with me. So the, uh, the, what normally happens within certain like invitations, uh, which of recently um, it's called a kind of a de delegation process. It's, it's a process that I've already uh, took from one uh, artist who was doing a publication in order to invite other contributors. So he kind of coined this idea of a, de of a delegation. So it's kind of a series of engagements or a series of conversations, whether by email, by text, by calls, by conversations. Um, so the idea of collaborating um, Implicates, implicates those uh, ideas uh, because at, at a time, oftentimes it's kind of uh, difficult to gauge, uh, gauge or engage like uh, relevant people or relevant participants or you know people are interested to take part. But uh, inviting people specifically as a delegation process um, allows a space for getting all those insights. Um, before someone kind of goes into making. So like it's, it's already a research process that uh, the participants engage with. Um, and then another issue, uh, important uh, idea regarding forms of collaboration is of course, it's kind of close to invitations, uh, forms of uh, like as a form of induction or uh, rehearsals where prior to uh, engaging uh, conversations we can initially start without a specific focus of okay well, this is the direction that the work is going to take so rehearsal processes um, immediately grants a space to uh, work within that so this project was part of the project i was doing in switzerland it was also a, a silent protest where i invited uh, three artists and uh, six artists to um, help me to do the performance it was within um, the river, the glacier, the, 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 the ice was melting within a specific period. Um, so there is vast amounts of water within that context. But at the same time, I was looking around like uh, global issues regarding uh, global warming and uh, how uh, water is becoming necessarily like a, both a commercial a manufacturing uh, element which is quite important and also as a domestic uh, product. Um, this is also key to other areas where water is particularly like a scarce kind of uh, thing where it cannot necessarily be accessed. So as um, in inducting the performers and the collaborators to uh, and my audiences to think through the, those process. Um, the, another element within forms of collaboration is obviously uh, presentation, documentation, documentation and publications. And this carries a multidisciplinary process in uh, making um, artistic work. Uh, uh, for, for example, taking photographic references, because once the performance happens, uh, there won't really be any results prior to that unless with that canonical idea that only the audiences have um, 
a testimony regarding the, regarding the performance. So as remnants within the performance, uh, documentation is already an important aspect. So uh, with collaborating, one would necessarily need uh, documentation uh, material, whether photographic, video, sound, uh, textual, which already uh, help within the perf performance process to uh, put them within a publication, whether it's done online or in, in a phys physical book, book. So these initial steps within collaboration structure have already placed the collective to work within um, these processes uh, um, in order to kind of work within a specific outcome. So because uh, within years of working collaboratively, we've put together uh, a systematic processes of beginning, beginning a production process towards its final outcomes. And uh, you probably like see the same kind of um, shifts or pointers as they happen in other works that we engage with. So performance was particularly like an important aspect and we still kind of carry it within the work that and the project that we put together. Um, so the challenges that no, normally happen within uh, uh, the collective or collectivity or collaborations is the idea of consistency. Um, because I think the challenge has happens that within a collaboration, perhaps maybe one or two people are the main kind of brains or think tank within uh, the collective. So uh, collectives of, of often suffer consistency regarding the production of uh, the making of the work, um, unless there is some kind of uh, delegation in relations to responsibilities, but the idea is not necessarily like to uh, run the, the collective as an institution, but at some point those kind of uh, areas uh, become important um, for the, both the sustainability of collective production and uh, its growth as well. So the one of the challenges that we have encountered within collective production is uh, consistency. And then um, because the work shifts from one situation in one space to the other, there's also feeds within the ideas of project to project basis. And it does not necessarily mean that if there is no uh, new project, we can't necessarily like work uh, because it's the idea of taking, uh, uh, for example, the work of um, John Dolo, we were invited for Kute Institute and then later on, we invited to get infecting the city, which already grows our audiences and grows our um, maybe patrons or people who are interested to support the collective. And then later on, we put together a small uh, catalog or publication to uh, share with other audiences that are more, um, maybe responds more to more textual and book-based uh, resources. Um, another another challenge within collective production is the support uh, for time days works um, because in the period that I was in Switzerland uh, there was an interesting support within time based medium whether video performance um, or films if I may say or more like web based projects uh, whereas in South Africa to respect there wasn't necessarily like a lot of uh, support both like financial or spatial support. Uh, so it's within these challenges that uh, collective production and collaborative productions can uh, uh, look at to kind of break that those uh, uh, challenges. Um, yeah. So there's the same work that we showed uh, called EXE, EXE in, in Switzerland, uh, collaborating with uh, five artists, six, six artists. Uh, this is the another uh, work um, called Sweatshop. It was a map uh, built within an industrial factory. The factory was a vegetable factory and was pre previously later changed into a, 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 a like project space. So where experimentation can take place and forms of collaborations can take place of, because of its vast aspect 
um, the project was mapped as a form of a small city where different performers could like cycle within this architectural environment. It both spoke to an imaginary aspect within a confined space uh, and also as a physical one. And also the idea of performing using already immediate resources, uh, which is kind of a, a very, it's, it's a gesture which is not quite overwhelming in its production values, but it's already an honest one that, uh, an, an apparent one that people already know of. Uh, uh, so this is the same work with uh, different performers. Uh, so the project already also had like cityscapes um, recorded within uh, Johannesburg uh, and Cairo. So, excuse me. So like the, the, the audiences and both the performers kind of navigated based on uh, how fast the traffic was. Um, if there's someone shouting, they would like sway the bicycle. You know, these, these, these forms of interaction that happen by chance or happen uh, through the responses of the sonic. What is important within the space is that because if it's, a, it's an industrial uh, zone, it had a particular echo which which kind of looped all the the sounds so you in, as an audience you we had like a series of echoes that uh, came back and forth um i would then shift to uh the films uh vr and xr projects um some of them the most recent work and the previous work that they've done um the first uh, piece of work that we we did was the installation, a video-based installation um, called Notes from an Algorithmic Memory. Uh, it was a series of uh, notes based on archive uh, material, shot in different contexts between Italy, uh, South Africa, and uh, Congo. So it was a collaboration with um, two artists, uh, who translated the, the audio material. It was based on Ellis Lee Harris, a photographer who was based in London, where she took different images uh, during the King Leopold in, in Congo. Um, this happened in, in a residency uh, project in Antwerp for three months, uh, engaging one artist in Joburg and one artist in, in Kinshasa. So the, the work was also invited uh, to take part at Ch uh, Central Fies in Italy and was also shown in uh, Antwerp. So I would probably play a kind of a clip of this project. So uh, it's probably like one minute. issue with the bandwidth. Okay, uh, I'd move maybe to another work. See if we get that. So this is the film that we did um, in Johannesburg in collaboration uh, with uh, artists from the Back Factory. Um, we we're interested in the architecture of the space, um, the sonic material that come or image within the space and its imaginary structure because of the, maybe I'd say like a more a testimonial kind of uh, aspect in, in the context of, of, of Fordsberg. Um, so the Peck Factory was in, in important for us in kind of thinking about the city of Johannesburg and the changes that the city has had uh, till the present. So it features David Kolwani and um, the late Dave, David Kolwani and the late David Kolwani and uh, Pet Mahutra. Um, it was a series of uh, conversations, and then um, we kind of take took different uh, frames within the city 
and put put them together as an essay film. Yeah, the the film is is a has a kind of a non-linear approach to it, um, in that it looks at the forms of uh, writing, like visual, uh, re- visual, visual, and both uh, camera-based writing as a kind of system. Um, so we also had uh, the previous uh, director of the Back Factory to collaborate with us, but we kind of put the film as a kind of a non-linear uh, structure. So it's, it's an essay-based film. I have a short clip of the film, uh, the trailer. I hope it also plays. It's playing now. I think um, yeah, there's an issue with um, maybe the bandwidth because it's probably it, it's playing from the server. But in any case, um, yeah, the film has different uh, facets within both the space and its external environment. Um, we collaborated with uh, two other artists from uh, was but was mainly a on the residency uh, during that period. So like the collaboration happened with. Uh, both the script writer, um, the idea came about and then we invited a script writer. And then from there, we invited a director to respond to the text, to the script and invited, we, uh, invited a, a costume designer. Then we invited, uh, yeah, the last uh, production phase was to have the conversation and then allow everybody to, uh, respond both to the textual visual uh, script of the of the material and then we went along then to uh, shoot the film so, uh, so this is one of our recent uh, projects um, called special fabrications uh, and unhabitable world um, the work that we did uh, because of the interest of both documentation and presentation within the public spheres. We were interested in seeing how an essay-based format within artistic production would already, because film already allows collaborations to happen. Um, we shot the, the project in Soweto and uh, at Constitutional Hill uh, to point to ideas of social justice and land and the questions of uh, identity politics as we see them within the current status quo in South Africa. Uh, so the, the, the project is a web VR is a, is a, is a very performative interactive uh, um, project that uh, houses three, three different voices. Um, one film is a stop motion by myself and the other one is by Mbali Lamini and Temba Kumalo. Um, so the, 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 the users engage within the space by going through a, a certain kind of an environment where they follow specific individuals to, to watch the film. The, the work is pertinently influenced by ideas of game design, the idea of play, uh, hence performances and important, an important like element within our artistic focus. So we see also technology or forms of technologies or image making, speaking directly to um, different audiences, whether they are in a domestic space or whether they are in uh, more artistic spaces like a museum or a gallery. Um, so the, the work was um, staged online for a Fago Kesi uh, festival in Johannesburg last year, and then was later invited for uh, this year for the Light Art Festival. So we, from an online-based uh, process of engagement and production, 
to a physical interactive was um, an interesting uh, form of, you know, process that uh, happened because we, we, we later saw a need to kind of collaborate because we're not really programmers or a web-based practitioners, but already we are aware of these issues and how to engage them. But some, um, some, some, some work with collaborating with a, a web-based developer um, allows the work to have a, a different life on its own outside of uh, more situated within, with uh, online-based uh, spaces, whether Facebook or uh, so um, the, 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 the idea of uh, virtual reality also speaks to the idea of performance or performance film. Uh, since performing uh, images and performing space, it's something that already happens within the broader fabric of Johannesburg and its neighboring um, places like Soweto and the rest of them. And we see them as spaces that constantly change. They're in a state of uh, flux and a state of uh, mobility. It's unfortunate that my videos are not playing. Uh, but I was just testing this now. So yeah, the, the series of videos that I wanted to share are, are trailers of the three stop motions and the trailer for tide rope um, that we had uh, in the production in, in the artistic uh, work of Trim Group. Maybe we can put the links to those in the, the comments when we're done. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this one is showing. Um, let's see. Oh, still. Okay. okay uh, yeah, this is one of my stop motion, and this is Timbers uh, and Bali's. Anyway, um, since we work within the confinements of both research, performance, film, and video. And um, the later the collective was interested to use open source because uh, as I spoke about the professionalization and the uh, non-commercial focus, uh, there is working with online-based uh, mediums. The challenge becomes paying for expensive licenses to get a software or for video editing, for example. Uh, these are the challenges that we encountered in our own artistic work and both in a uh, collective artistic work. But we had to see uh, within this challenge, how do we work and still approach a more professionalized maybe version, not using really expensive software that we don't really have money to pay for. Um, uh, because I think the reconciliation of artistic production within both the educational sphere of things and then reconcil reconciling that within working as an artist kind of becomes a challenge for most artists. So for us, we initially thought about the idea of staging workshops in order to share our research process, our production process within a wider audience. And then the idea of open source uh, technologies or processes that enables artistic production um, came about. So with each, um project we do workshops in order to engage both professional uh people within the context of uh artistic artistic production and um interest groups that might be interested or see any use of um uh, any process of in that they can kind of take within um uh, how we work. So previously, the 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 collective has had uh, well at the moment is three is two facilitators myself and and Bali, um, and then uh, Dennis Ramashikha is an artist, photographer, and musician, and then um, I had a typo here. <laughs> and Millicent Dimklambi, uh, she's a performance uh, performance artist and a writer. Uh, the first workshop that we did was a performance code workshop. It was an installation based workshop uh, to help both performers, not really help, but to uh, and 
see how forms of engagements can happen to entice them within the collective processes. Um, so the province court was an installation based workshop, video installation based workshop uh, with the use of uh, Raspberry Pi, a, a new media uh, mini computer that does a, a number of things. Um, and then we had uh, one guy from Switzerland uh, who was here for the period of three months and we gave him a space to introduce the participants of uh, using um, a Raspberry Pi. So the installation was uh, more with not necessarily artistic folk, was not really artistically uh, aligned, but it was within uh, seeing how introducing this uh, media to different participants who are not within the arts only. We both we had both artists and just a general general uh, audience who were not within the artistic uh, sphere. So it was interesting to see how we kind of work together. Um, yeah, with, with the, without any particular direction or focus. Um, so like taking specific elements uh, within the workshop. So we we then um, put together all ten participants to work within like one small project, a small editing, a project, and then use the Raspberry Pi to play the series of clips that were uh, were produced within a two day period. Uh, so this was some of the media uh, sharing processes that we used for our social media. Um, with the with the workshop processes that we uh, put together, I think the fundamental thing um, within this workshop was to position ourselves within a Johannesburg Art Gallery um, as a stance to engage them and create opportunities. Because one of the challenges is not necessarily you can one as a collective we cannot always wait for open calls uh, to apply for supporting a project. We can eventually approach institutions to host us, whether for a workshop and then through the workshop and the small material resources that we have, and then seeing how uh, there is a, maybe a lack or the shortcomings that they already have. Uh, one thing which, is, which was in, in, um, kind of fundamental within this uh, workshop within Johannesburg Art Gallery uh, was they had like a lot of media uh, material that were kind of redundant, like tele television screens, computer keyboards that haven't really been used and were not really taken care of for a period of time. Um, so they gave us a, a space that, okay, look, we this is the stuff that we have, uh, projectors and speakers and everything. We can just uh, use this for the workshop. So um, in, this, in this way, we kind of introduced like a new media, um, a new media technology uh, open source project to in, to kind of in, entice and create an opportunities for ourselves. Was uh, what what was kind of funny with uh, staging the workshop at Johannesburg Gallery. Um, I think they had to do an exhibition there, and then there was a challenge with their old technology. It was one of the requirements that the one artist want was more like a 4K, and obviously they can rent out, uh, you know material that uh, fit enough to uh, show the work. So because of the workshop that we did there, they asked, they, they requested that we'd ha we help them to uh, create the installation. So as I spoke about like creating opportunities, uh, both for the collective and its sustainability is um, kind of a direction that perhaps most collective or collaborators who are working within specific projects they can look into um to see how a, a a work or a body of work can fit within a certain context by either growing the the, the audiences or enticing institutions to respond or force them to to respond um because it is a very kind of a gestural thing of forcing the institutions to 
responds to the change that are already happened within the broader uh, scope of artistic production. Um, the most recent uh, project that we are working on is a 3D scanning workshop. Uh, we're supported by Prol Visha for a, a, a breathing space grant. Um, the project started in Music Africano in Spain for a residency. Uh, then we scanned um, using open source ways to archive the, not the, the idea was not city to archive, uh, but we were interested to use the repository in our fil film work. So uh, we we're already searching for other alternative ways of scanning these African artifacts. And then open source scanning processes emerged through our research. Uh, using a Kinect sensor and an open source software, which is a very kind of uh, seamless, smooth approach. Uh, we were already using that approach to um, engage other artists. We've already started with a 3D scanning workshop where we went to the film studios. We invited eight artists um, to present one work and then we scan the work, send it to a 3D artist to polish it and then uh, put the material in. Uh, UV mapping, and then we send a copy to the artist and then see how a uh, possibility of the archive can kind of exist as an application and as a website, uh, kind of creating a geographical map of these three objects um, uh, or artif African artifacts in European museum. Uh, the, the, the project is a very ambitious project, uh, but we are uh, interested to entice different interest groups, whether researchers, anthropologists, in its more simplified uh, version and its most in its own um, ambitious scope. So uh, at the moment, we are in the process of creating a website of this repository. Uh, so this is the remnants, the photographic documentation of the workshop that took place. Uh, this is Pet Mahutra and Bado Um scanning the one of his sculptures and this is one from and um, yeah so we we're also very fortunate to uh, push i mean it wasn't really necessarily like a push but with the POC he works with like two bit 2d uh, versions of his uh, working processes so immediately when invited him i wasn't also sure how he could Nessa like fit within uh, this project. And then he put together one, he converted one of his um, uh, artworks into a 3D uh, sculpture through an M MDF laser cut it. Uh, so he kind of creates these patterns and stick them together. So he turned them into a 3D version. So it was a very interesting um, idea that came uh, with him to like, uh, then we he told us later, it's like, I'm, I'm really happy that you guys invited me because I had this idea all the time, but I didn't necessarily have a chance. So in this case, it, it allows a space to already push the art, some of the artists that we want to engage with to push their work at the same time, um, force collab like to kind of uh, um, forge a collaboration with all these artists. Um, it's also, the same point with the stop motion uh, process that we uh, took part, we, we kind of engaged, where some of the artists that have seen the stop motions by different artists, uh, Temba works with uh, charcoal drawings, and then he, we um, kind of recorded each frame of his processes in the studio over a period of a year or so, uh, through maybe one day a week. Uh, then by the end of the year, he kind of had a, a finished idea for a stop motion. So we had like this series of photographic material. Um, and obviously it's a very time consuming uh, process, but like uh, the, the kind of, the way we, we kind of uh, imagined the outcomes for us was a more motivation to move with the work. Uh, the same that happened with like the uh, making 2D work and then seeing how he's, I mean, it wasn't really our, our focus to push him to this direction, but it's something that we saw and then he kind of uh, brought it up. So we're really excited about this. 
Uh, this is Sandy Les as, uh, as well. He works with, um, he's a sculptor and a painter and does uh, graffiti. He already ha had his, like he already has like sculptural works um, in his artistic uh, oeuvre. So this is some of his work. Um, so the end of scanning the objects would be to uh, edit them by a 3D artist and then see how they would fit within the repository or library along with the artifacts. Uh, but it's something that we're hoping to do over time. And then to also push the artist to these open source processes to one, archive their work, two, see how the virtual archive can have a life of its own um, in relation to maybe sharing it within their wider audiences or using it within their professional professional work. And at the same time, if the, the direction is not necessarily something that wanna go to, um, they can invite us to make the, uh, these, um, if maybe they were one artist is commissioned and they wanna put them a kit so that their clients see those kind of things, it's something that they can uh, move, move with. Uh, so this is, these are some of the samples of the virtual, from the virtual library of the 3D artifacts. It's, a, it's an animated GIF, so I hope there's a problem with it. Yeah, so it's, an, it's a series of objects that were scanned at Museum Africa. Um, it's um, a sculpture from Ghana. Um, and then we also are aware of more research focus within these, uh, the, this project because I, I, it is a very, uh, ambitious project that we would like to really treat it in a more sensitive way rather than uh, rushing to have you know the the works finished so it took quite a long time since 2018 to be at this stage not 2018 2019 so it has been a period of three years uh to do this uh so we would yeah we we are more very sensitive because we are aware of its Futurity in its uh, possibility that can um, uh, happen. Because I, I think one of the fundamental thing with like uh, these kind of uh, projects was there isn't in a sense like a visibility with African artifacts within both within like uh, internet uh, archives, whether it's done voluntarily by people. So there's like a lack of them. Um, so we felt like there was a need that this happens. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> so yeah, um, I think there was a sense of need that uh, we work within this with this process. Um, this is another sculpture. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So this is another sculpture. It's at the moment, it's a, it's, it's a series of seven objects that we have been kind of trying to uh, uh, like put together. There are scans, like 3D scans. And then obviously they need a little bit of cleaning and editing with their actual reference material. So it's, it's a very, it's kind of time consuming, the same as it is with like making a stop uh, motion film. Uh, Yes, there is a sense of patience that has to be and a form of sensitivity that happens within uh, these artistic production. Because um, sometimes when you like rush things and then you know mistakes happen over time, it's kind of difficult to go back. So yeah, we are kind of more excited to take this, this project and to have more support uh, as we go. Um, at the end of my presentation and um, We'll put the links as can to say thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to you uh, to contact us uh, you'll find us at, at uh, info at primgroup.net or on the uh, internet we have a website primgroup.net and facebook and instagram thank you very much well, thanks so much pumlani that was really interesting to actually hear about the collective in this way and um, to hear you reflect on where it's come from um, up until now. And do you, do you think that the online shift that's been necessitated from COVID, has it added to the collective's practice 
Um, or do you, are there still drawbacks, do you think? Um, I think uh, it's, it's a very interesting shift uh, for maybe two reasons. Um, as, an, as, an, as an approach that would allow for different audiences. Uh, because I think more online audiences um, are kind of implied as both like physical audiences. Um, but with all the online audiences, uh, because of the over overwhelming amount of data, it's, it's, if it, it's, I think it's not quite easy. Yes, it is important. It's, it's, it has a, a particular uh, angle to uh, have that data. Uh, whereas uh, with physical audiences, um, you know, it's people that might, some of them will talk to you, some of them might not, you know, so uh, within like uh, online based platforms, I think the audiences feel like there is a more like a rapid response because of its, its kind of initial conception. Um, but like what was maybe more interesting is thinking about the online uh, process and fitting it both into physical uh, space. The same that we've done with special fabrications when it was shown at uh, Fagu Kesi, it was a virtual uh, VR project. And then we took that uh, package and then putting it, put, uh, put, it, uh, put it as a physical component where um, users can still engage um, using motion sensors and, and things as if they're looking at the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it's, an, it's, an, it's an interesting shift, I yeah. think. Um, and so you, you use your studio at the bag factory as the operational base for the collective. Um, and I'm curious how you maintain the balance between your own artistic practice and that of the collectives. And also, do you think there's any influence from the bag factory studio space as a whole or the community on the work that you're doing? Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I think, yeah, because of um, resources and then also the idea of a project to project base, um, there's already like a risk and, and I mean, an imbalance that happens um, where sometimes it feels like some work would necessarily like mean that uh, I do it if someone, if there's no one who's gonna do it, like I'm not gonna, like, it's not gonna happen, <laughs> you know? Uh, because of course, uh, yes, being a think tank already implies that like, um, you have to give a direction of some, some one way or another, you know, unless people would never know what to do. Um, so yes, I use my studio as both my, my operation, but we already also using Mbali Studio for some of our pro processes. So it's kind of uh, feeding both into uh, individual work and both as a collective work. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, this comes with, with challenges as well. Um, yeah, the, the imbalances of kind of staying um, consistent, but I think the idea of collaboration or delegating certain tasks to people that can do them, if there is someone like that, becomes more easy. And then the, the, the only issue is just to make sure that everything kind of comes together. Yeah. And then is there a project uh, or projects that you haven't received funding for that you would still love to realize? What support would you need to do this? And would it be a physical project or an online project? Um, most projects that we've done, we kind of got support <laughs> um, uh, one way or another, whether, uh, because I, yes, financial support is important, but like um, also human resources, as for example, with the Joanna Speck Art Gallery, um, when also Vanza came, came, up, came on board as well. Uh, the, the idea was to, of course, approach Joanna Speck Art, Art Gallery to have, to host a workshop there. And then also Vanza was interested to support the, the, the project. Um, so the most like maybe ambitious uh, work is the one that we're doing at the moment. I uh, would feel like we need more support, both human resource support and maybe financial support because there is financial implications in the work. And then sometimes you are base, you're basing um, a, a process and then it kind of takes different directions, you know? by engaging certain people 
uh, someone feel like I, this is not my scope of uh, direction. Yes, it's something I can try, but I'm not going to do it uh, because of certain reasons. Um, yeah, the, 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 one, the one that we're working on uh, for the 3D scanning project, because we feel like it's a very important project that we do. Um, so we are thinking both of its online version and its offline version uh, as a form of a library or a virtual, uh, like a virtual museum, or whatever, that can go in different places and audiences engage with, engage with it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so the resources can be both financial and human resource. And the 3D scanning project, where do you see it, it going? Where is the ideal? Yeah. What, yeah, what is the ideal one, space that you would love like it to be held at? Or like um, it to be? Um, the, I, I don't think there's quite an, an, like an ideal space because at the moment is within uh, a, as a form of kind of a website that we like still building. Um, and I think the idea is just to see how this, this repository or library grows uh, with collaborations with different institutions. Um, as we started with Museo Africano, but it was a, specifically for residency and then um, engaging Johannesburg Art Gallery once things clear within COVID and then also approaching other institutions to um, give us a chance at least to like see how we can work together. Um, because of course we feel it's, it's, a, it's an important kind of process and, and work that needs to happen. Um, because it, it's not that it, it won't necessarily like rely on institutions. Institutions are equally important. It's the same as a more kind of voluntary process that we initially adopted for ourselves. Um, whether the institutions are there or not, it's still gonna happen, you know? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's happening. <clears throat> Yeah, great. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right, thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, and then we'll put the links in the, the comments. And yeah, if anyone would like to contact uh, Pumlani or the preempt group, their details are there, or you can reach out to us as well through the Bag Factory, um, which is on, it's uh, bagfactoryart.org.za. And uh, I'd just like to thank the Triangle Network for the opportunity to share a little bit about what um, is happening under the bag factory's roof um, and thank you as well to Prince Klaus for supporting the project. All right, thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, bye.